Hello, everyone. Good evening to you. I appreciate you coming in. Uh, our, our boxing class went a little longer than we thought it was going to. Appreciate you coming in to our Ride the Pattern here, Neutrina Ride the Pattern. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, Gil Gallion's going to do our, our pattern for us tonight. Uh, we want to thank Natrina for sponsoring our Ride the Patterns. We have, uh, and they have a matching fund for our crisis fund. So we're going to have a couple of guys going through with some buckets. And uh, so if you guys would like to give to the crisis fund, uh, we greatly appreciate it. It goes to a good cause to help professionals when they're in time of need. And uh, the, then I'll like to say Natrina will match that. Also, uh, at the up here around the 50 yard line right up here somewhere we're going to have a, a sign up for some uh, free uh, bag of feed up there with neutrina feed so uh, please uh, sign up uh, this evening for that like i say we're fortunate to have gil gallion with us he's a multiple world champion he's trained many world and reserve world champions and congress champions he uh, has a long list of accolades. He's first and only million dollar rider in NSBA. We want to congratulate him for that. He just achieved that the other day. And uh, yeah, big round of applause for him. We have two of his assistants here that are going to help us as well. And so with that, Gil, I'll turn it over to you and thank you. To, there. Is that coming through now? Pete, thank you. And uh, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'm probably not the best clinician you'll ever go to to attend, but uh, I'll, uh, we'll try our very best. I, I appreciate uh, the AQHA allowing me uh, this venue to, to, to discuss some things that, about the Western Pleasure Horse and uh, uh, We'll try and uh, we'll try and talk, hit on a lot of topics, and then uh, we'll, at the end of it, we'll follow up with a little bit of a question and answer session. If you have some questions, you know, I'd like to start off by introducing a couple guys that uh, help us there, and they're they're two of the hardest working people I've ever been around, and I mean that sincerely. It's Denton DeBure and uh, Aaron Moses, and uh, with that, we've got a couple of horses that are going to ride around here a little bit later, and um, I know we're very lucky, very very lucky to have them. So, uh, you know. You know, people ask me sometimes, well, you know, how did, what made you choose uh, Western Pleasure? And I think, uh, you know, there's probably a number of reasons. Um, it's a real historical class within the AQHA, you know. Uh, gosh, I mean, even when I was first a little kid, my father was a horse trainer, so I grew up around it. But, you know, it's a class that's almost 60 years old that's been offered with the AQHA. So uh, it's one of the earliest classes that was offered. And then I think as, as horsemen, you know, as we choose it, you know, all horsemen are drawn to movement, and uh, it doesn't matter. You know, I, you know, a couple of times I've gone to to racehorse sales, you know, and all, you know, all the most famous trainers in the world are out there watching a horse track and move, you know, and that's, uh, you know, the rainers they'll talk about it, and so, uh, you know, movement is something that that has always, you know, it, it's appealed to me. It, it's drawn me to it, and so, you know. In our show horse world, the Western Pleasure class is the class which I feel most exemplifies movement. And uh, it's judged on, to me, it's a movement class. It's judged on the quality of gait. And so uh, that's, that's what drew, you know, drew me to this profession. And you know, I'm very, very proud to, to been, have been able to do it. It's allowed me to, you know, me and, to make a living in, within this industry. And uh, we're very thankful for it. It's, um, there are a lot of people that, you know, we'll have, we'll draw big crowds every time uh, here for our finals and at the Congress, you know, there's always a big crowd of people will come to watch a Western Pleasure class finals. So uh, as we'll go through it, you know, I, I you know, we're going to talk, touch on a couple different things, you know, qualities I look for, uh, and then the presentation of the horse. And I think that's, uh, that's probably one of the most uh, talked about things that we have today is, is you know, what how the horse is presented and what, what the public finds appealing. And, and I think we need to be real conscious of that. And so uh, we'll, uh, 
we'll kind of get into some of that and uh, move along here. And as I said, towards the end of it, I'll try and, uh, try and uh, take some questions and answers. Uh, you know, we've got, we've got a variety of horses here, a uh, little different styles, you know, and uh, so you can kind of watch it and we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit and uh, see some of the things. But, uh, you know, I'd like to start out, you know, we, uh, you know, we're, we, we start a lot of colts every year and, and, you know, we spend a lot of time riding horses. And so that's one of my, you know, one of my beliefs about, about a horse, about a pleasure horse. And, and when I'm watching, watching other horses, you know, that's, uh, if I'm picking out something, you know, we want to try and go buy for a client or, or what I, I want, I want to look at that horse and think, you know, that horse looks easy to ride. You know, it, it, I want to be able to enjoy that ride. It's a Western pleasure class. It's supposed to be a pleasurable experience. And, you know, I think that's, um, you know, I'll look at some and I'll think, boy, that, you know, that does not look easy to ride. And, and so that's, that's something I would like to see us as, you know, from a training concept continue to focus on is developing horses that are comfortable to sit on. And I think that's something that, uh, you know, there are different reasons that play into that. And uh, I think that's something that really needs to be uh, paid a lot of attention to. And when, you know, when someone goes and tries out a horse, you know, that, you know, whether, you know, that, that horse needs to be easy for you to ride. It needs to be cadenced at the trot. It needs to be comfortable at the walk. And it needs to be very comfortable when you lope it around. So those are things that uh, I think, uh, I want to really emphasize here tonight. Um, the next thing, you know, it, it, the, the class has changed a lot. It's, uh, you know, when I, when I started showing, I mean, you would, you know, the training has is really came a long ways. I mean, it, when, like I said, when I started showing, I mean, I remember lining up and you'd ask the guy next to you, did you catch your leads? I mean, you know, did you get the right lead? I mean, people would miss leads in a Western pleasure class, I promise you, I've done it. Um, so, you know, you, that's something that you never see anymore. It just doesn't happen. So uh, that's, you know, that's, that's no different than other disciplines, you know, things, things change, you know, competition makes someone try and get better. So it's evolved, you know, we, uh, we have a horse now, you know, our, our top horses uh, showing a looser rein than what they did 20 years ago. There's less contact, there's less, uh, you know, there's less handling in the class. So, um, it's came a long ways. Obviously, you know, part of that, you know, we ride with our legs a lot more now than we used to, and so those things have, can, you know, contributed to the evolution of the horse. But the biggest thing uh, that, you know, in the breeding, I, you know, I should touch on that too, you know, years and years ago, it was just people would get up and try anything, you know, and, you know, as it's come, you know, horses that were successful went to the breeding farms, and, and so we've We've concentrated on breeding Western Pleasure horses much more than what we did 30 years ago or 40 years ago. So uh, it's uh, it's a big industry. That, you know, our, our sales have been real good the past couple of years. It's uh, a lot of people enjoy the class. It's not for everyone, but uh, it offers a venue for all levels of riders to come to, and participate. And that's uh, I think that's a very positive for for the industry. It. it uh, you know, we offer classes for everybody, and, and uh, if you can ride a horse, you can ride a Western Pleasure horse, and that's something that's uh, real important. Um, I guess with that said, I'm going to kind of move in here, and, and uh, I'll just demonstrate a little bit, and then I'll have Denton and Aaron kind of move theirs around some, and, uh, uh, you know, we want to try and train a horse, as I was speaking to a little earlier, that you know, that, that's real comfortable to ride and, and, and it's responsive, but I want it to enjoy its job. You know, I don't, I don't want a horse to hate, you know, I, I, I don't want to look at a horse and it look brownie or, or you know, and I, and I try to stay away from bloodlines that I think produce a cranky horse, you know, because I, I think a judge wants to look out there and see something that looks like it's enjoying its job, you know. Uh, you know, that's, that, you talk about that expression and, and when I sit in the stands and watch a class, you know, you, you can see it. So uh, that's something that I always pay attention to when, when we're looking at horses. But, you know, the trot, 
you know, I, I don't, one of my pet peeves is I want a horse to hit its diagonals when it's trotting. So, you know, real quickly, you know, a diagonal, when its left front hits the ground, its right rear needs to hit the ground. When its right front hits the ground, its left rear hits the ground. That's a cadence trot. That that's, gives me rhythm. I can set up here, one, two, one, two, one, two. You know, I don't want to see a horse that misses its diagonals. Now, that's, that's something, again, that the, be, the great horses, you know, the good horses are going to do that. The ones that aren't as good a quality trotter, they're going to miss their diagonals. They're not going to hit. So, I mean, you can kind of watch this mare here. When her right front hits, her left rear hits. When her left front hits, her right rear hits. You know, that's, um, that's what we're after. If I want to extend out, you know, my horse is going to be responsive and it's going to steer. Again, this is, this is qualities that I think a judge is going to look for. You know, how, you know, how does your horse carry itself at, at a, you know, an extended gate? You know, they're going to call for extensions. They have that right to do that. So, I'll ease back here to slow trot. You know, how, how well does it transition back to the normal trot, slow trot? So, again, that's things that we want to look for. But, you know, I feel like, you know, this horse didn't change its top line good. It stayed responsive. Again, that's, um, that's something that, that, again, I believe we're going to look for. You know, next we're going to come here, and I'll lope around here a minute. Um, you know, I, again, I guess I've been doing it a long time, so I have my beliefs in, in what I think is desirable traits. And I, and I base that, not that everybody's going to agree with me, but I base that upon a lot of years of showing and training horses. So... Uh, when I lope a horse around, I'm going to try and talk, keep going here. I mean, I want to feel a rhythm, you know. I, I, I don't want to feel a horse beating me to death here in the saddle. I mean, I, I want it to be comfortable to ride. Uh, a big deal with, you know, the, the great horses are going to match up front and back. You know, I, we don't, we're, we're not looking for a short, choppy, strided horse. We're looking for a horse that completes its stride. And I think that's, well, that's what I, you know, we talk about a lot. I mean, I, that horse has got, he's got to finish its stride. You know, I don't want a short, choppy horse. And I want it, I want it to match up. I want it to separate in front just like it separates behind. I don't want, I don't want all hawk, you know, a big back end and, and, and not much front end or, you know, I want it to. I want it to separate in front. I don't want like this horse here when the left lead. So I don't want its right front leg taking as big a step as its left front leg. I want to see separation, but I want it to be rhythmic, and I don't want it to have to use its head and neck to take the next stride. You know, it's got to be steady. That's what separates the better horses from the bad horses. And where I think we get, in, you know, I don't want to look at a horse or I don't want to present a horse. If that judge is standing there thinking, well, is it going to take the next stride? Is it going to, you know, I don't want to see a big hesitation. I want to see flow and rhythm. Self-carriage. Ooh. Um, you know, we as trainers, and, and I, you know, we see it, and, and no, nobody's perfect. And, and look, some horses are better than others. Not ever, you know. Not every horse can run as fast as American Pharaoh or Rachel Alexander. I mean, there are better horses. But I think we as, we as trainers, those are things that I think that the public will find, that they find, the public finds appealing, and I think the judges find appealing. So again, I don't want to see a horse that's like pausing, taking a stride, pausing, taking a stride. I want to see it flow across the arena. And it doesn't matter whether we're on the rail or off the rail, I want it to flow. And I want it to match up front, front and back. I don't want to see all front end and no back end, or all back end and no front end. But it, to me, as a trainer, you know, it's, it starts, well, I've got to have, I've got to have drive from behind. You know, I, I, to me, when you find a horse that's really using its head and neck and laboring and it does, you know, it's got to go from behind. It's got to push. Uh, 
you know, there, there's, there's lots of opinions on, you know, can't and how far, you know, how, how a horse carries its hip. I mean, if a horse has too much, if it has too much can't, you're going to shut its front end down. It's got to match up. Um, so, I, you know, I think the public finds that appealing, and I think that's what judges, that's one of the things they look for to, to place the class. You know, a judge has got to find, he's got to find, he's got to place the class. That's his job. So he's got to look for characteristics that he finds appealing. So he's going to look for those things. Uh, it, they're talked to about it at workshops, and, and we as riders, that's, you know, that's something we've got to be conscious of to, to present to them. Uh, if you guys will kind of maybe, Denton and Arrows just start kind of moving their horses around here a little bit. Uh, we can talk about movement a little bit more. Uh, we might have to give them just a second to warm up here. Um, you'll, uh, I think you guys can go to the rail, son. Aaron, come, come down here and just trot around Dent in a second, if you would, please. You know, I think, you know, both of these horses, you know, carry a pretty good top line. Uh, they're pretty level. They're not down heavy on the front end. Necks aren't down in the dirt. And, and you know, quite frankly, you're not going to be able to compete if a horse has got its head too low. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's just judges aren't going to find it appealing. It, it's, uh, it's not going to present well. Now, Denton, circle behind and get, uh, get behind Aaron a second. Or maybe just turn around, just turn, circle around and come back down this way. You know, again, both of these horses are hitting their diagonals pretty good. They're a little different, you know, they're a little different style of horses, but both are carrying their riders around pretty smooth. If you guys want to try and lope a little bit, maybe I'd like for we try and lope together if you could, where we could kind of talk about it some. If you need to warm up a minute, we can, but maybe let Denton get turned around. He can lope behind you there, Aaron. Just stop a second. Okay, go ahead. Maybe just kind of cut across half the arena there, Aaron. Yeah, just cut across so you can come back and they can kind of see on this rail some. Okay, I'm going to kind of let them go this speed right here a little bit. And see, and then, I, and then I'm going to ask him to kind of move, especially Aaron, to maybe move his up a little bit. You know, to me, you know, to me right there at that speed, Aaron's horse has got a little bit, the front horse here has got just a little bit too much hesitation. It's just waiting a little bit. I'm looking at that. I'm thinking, oh, oh, come on. So, you know what, go ahead and, we're like when Denton's, when his isn't looking around, uh, you know, to me, Denton, the horse Denton's on has got a little more flow. It's got a little more swing out of its hip. You know, it, it looks comfortable for Denton to ride. You know, its shoulders come up, it points its toe, it lopes out of its hip. Now, Aaron's kind of moved his forward a little bit and cut across the middle. Well, now it doesn't look as hesitating. You know, it doesn't look like it's, oh, is that going to, and we know when, he, when I look at that now, I'm not worried about it taking the next step. That I find appealing. You know, that it's comfortable, it's self-carriage, it's on its own. Now it's, it's, you know, it's more closely aligned with what Denton's horse is. And that, you know, I think that's something that's... Now, if Aaron has to come up and pass somebody, if I'm judging, I don't mean to hit this mic every time, you know, I like that. I, I don't... It's got flow, it's got rhythm. I don't look at that horse and think, well, is it gonna take the next stride? Is it gonna go again? Maybe turn around and go the other way. A 
Okay, try and make it go as slow as you can, Aaron. Kind of ride the brake there a little bit. Okay, there we go again. You know, our, our stride's a little choppier. It looks hoppier off its front end. Now it's starting to see how it immediately went to trying to use its neck. Well, because, you know, it, it's struggling. It's laboring. So you can look at those two horses, and it's much easier for this horse here to lope than it is the one Aaron's on. Now Aaron, move her up a little bit. There we go. See how that horse that Aaron's on has changed his profile there? Now it's got some flow to it. Okay, let him trot again, guys. So I think that's where we get, you know, when I show a horse, and I've probably passed more horses than anybody showing horses, but I I want to show my horse in space. I want to be out by itself. And if, it, if I've got to go around somebody, I'm not, I don't, and you know, I just, I believe that's the thing to do. I, I think a horse looks better in space where you can let it flow than it does riding up on the tail of another horse. You know, I uh, didn't turn around and lope to, the, lope to the left there, I guess. Let me, you know, just like, like my horse here that I'm on, it's probably a hand taller than this one. Uh, just slope on the rail here. I'll go to the rail, low, left, please. You know, I probably have no shot at staying behind Dent. My horse is a hand taller. Oh, I know I have no shot. That didn't take long. But I'm not going to fight it. You know, not. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try and go get to that spot where I can let my horse flow. Because it all goes back to the judges or judging movement. And a horse that has flow is going to move, move better than one that's cramped down. Ooh. So that's, you know, Those are things that that I that I feel very strongly about. You know, right? I just think that uh, you know I, I I want a horse to demonstrate those characteristics that that I'm that I'm talking about there with you. So uh, I think sometimes I think I think a horse has got to have it's got to have rhythm. It's got to have the ability to to carry itself around the arena to be a great winning horse. But I also think we have to allow that horse to flow and have and have some carriage. You know, I, you know, I want when we when we bring a horse to horse shows, I, and the guys can tell you this, I want the all-around trainers to come up and ask about it. You know, I want them to like that horse. I want someone to say, man, I want to go make a Western Rider out of that horse, or you know, I want I want it to go do do that's that's a compliment to us if we can bring a horse to, to the show that that they find appealing. Because, you know, we want it to go on and do some other things. I mean, I, I'll try and lope this mare around here a minute. I, I haven't did this in a long time, but on this mare, but. Uh oh. She's got a little frowny with me there, but. You know, you want something that, of course, she wants to come back and. Get right back to be a pleasure horse. Ooh. There's no reason the pleasure horse can't do several events. It ought to be able to turn around, go and make a horsemanship horse for somebody, and do do several things. So that you know, those guys that train the Western Riders and the horsemanship horses, and they're they're not going to look for a trashy moving horse. They, you know, they want something that's got some self carriage that they can teach to lope out and change leads. And that's that's the kind of horse that I think we need to produce as Western Pleasure Trainers. So, um, you know, I, 
again, we can, um, you know, there's probably other issues that we could talk about, but I mean, those are, showing your horse in space, I think is, is the biggest, I think that's the biggest thing to being successful. Um, and, and presenting that horse in a way that it looks comfortable to ride. Um, you know, I want, when people watch you and they are watching, you know, they want to see something that, well, I could go ride that horse. So that's, that's what we, you know, that's, that's something we firmly believe in. Um, you know, and when, when we're training, obviously you want to have a horse that's not, you know, we talk about, I don't want to be scared of her hands. You know, you won't be able to, you know, move it around and, you know, soften it up. And, and you know, a horse has to be supple. You have to be able to, you know, move its shoulders around. Uh, it can't be, you know, it can't fight your legs. Uh, I don't, you know, no matter what event you're doing, you know, a horse has got to be responsive to your cues. Um, so, I mean, those are things that we as trainers, you're going to see us out here in the warm-up pen. We're going to bump on a horse a little bit. We're going to move it around some, but just enough to where that horse is paying attention to us. It's no different no matter what event you're doing. That horse has got to be listening to the rider and be responsive. Um, but those are, you know, those are some things that, that I think we need to continue to, to emphasize when, when, we, when we show. And I guess I'd kind of close that with you. Maybe if someone has some questions, I'll be happy to try and, try and answer some. I hope that's kind of showed you some difference in horses and uh, some of the things we believe in. I've got a question right here. I'm going to ride over here where I can hear you a little bit. Uh, this horse is actually, she's 10 years old. Uh, and she's won, uh, I think, seven trophies here in Western Pleasure. So she's, she's been a very successful horse here. Oh, she sure has. And one in Western Riding, actually. So she's done good. But she, yeah, she is 10. And this was her last show here the other night. So she was good. Does anybody have any questions? There's one from Ty Hornick down here. Yeah, you know, Ty said, you know, talk a little bit about pace versus speed. Uh, you know, I think I kind of sold you, you know, her, like this mare didn't, when I fell in there behind Denton, who's on a much shorter horse, I didn't have to, you know, I didn't really, I didn't change my pace. It's just, it's just that my pace, due to this mare's size, meant I was going a little faster than him. So, uh, Something that, and I think this mare demonstrates it to me real good. And maybe I'm a little prejudiced because this mare's been so good to me. But you know, when I when I move her out, she doesn't get quicker legged. You know, her legs don't start going 90 to nothing. You know, and and oh, and I, you know, I've told this to several people. It doesn't matter what speed we're going. Some horses are still going to be better movers than others. Now. Uh, that's just the way it is. That, you know, some guys can jump higher than I can. I mean, that's just the reality in, in all walks of life. But when I, no matter if I, if I speed this horse up, I don't want her legs to get quicker. I want her to have more flow and stay soft-legged. Well, so that's, um, you know, again, that's something that, that makes a difference in the quality of horse. Uh, but I want a horse to complete its stride. You know, that's, that's, uh, I don't want to look over there and that thing's half strided and it's, you know, I want it to, it's got to flow. It's got to go through. It's got to finish. I call it float. I want it to float through the air. You know, I don't want it to look like it's laboring. And that's, uh, you know, if I watch the horses that, that I'd like to change, that's what I see them doing. They just, they look labor. They look uncomfortable to ride. And so, um, again, I don't mean to pound on that, on that thing immensely but but Ty makes a good point you know I mean pace and, and carrying a horse self carriage around there that's uh, just because I gallop out here I don't want its legs to get quicker I want it to flow yes sir No, I, I'm not. 
that, that I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah. You know, he asked if I'm behind a smaller horse and I'm not passing. Is that okay? Sure, that's fine. I mean, I, uh, I have no. As long as my horse is comfortable for me to ride, that's what I'm going to worry about. And if I feel like I'm letting that horse flow, if I'm looking like, you know, if I feel like I'm presenting my horse to where it's demonstrating self carriage, leading its stride, then I'm happy with that. And I'm not going to try and chase a horse in front of me. I, I'm, I won't ever do that. But um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shut it down so much that I pull it out of its rhythm. Um, but I do want it. I want it to flow around the arena. So I hope that you know kind of answers your question. Yeah, if I'm if I'm if I've got my spot there and everything's good and it feels good, that's what I'm going to show. That's what I'm going to show. <laughs> That's, uh, I wonder about that sometimes myself, you know, uh, and I've had that happen. You know, her question was, you know, if you're at a show and you feel like, you know, you feel like you're going with forward motion and you're, you're happy with what you've got and the judges ask for, an in, for a lengthen of stride, I guess, or so be it, um, you know, I, if I might... I'm not going to slow it down any. <laughs> I guess that's the question. I mean, I, that's a little bit tough because there's been times I felt like, well, man, this thing's, this thing's loping, you know, and, and, the, and the judges will ask for that. And so I probably will, I might show them that it might increase a little bit, but I'm not going to start galloping my horse. I'm not. Uh, I, think as long, I think the judges, as long as they're looking at a whole, but where we get into trouble is sometimes I don't think we let horses finish their stride. I, you know, so I, I think that's, um, I think that's sometimes where, you know, we get what comes first. But, uh, you know, if I feel like it's kicking, you know, if it's rhythmic and it's kicking me in the seat, and, it, and I feel like it's throwing its legs out there, you know, I'm, uh, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. But, quite honestly, I'm going to be trying to demonstrate that from the get-go. Yes, sir. Say this again. Aaron's horse when he went down the wall first trip. Would you be critical of the uh, Yeah, that's what and I told Aaron to kind of crank her down here and make her go a little slower. You know, so yeah, when his first pass there, it, you know, it was probably a little too it was a little too sucked back. So uh, then after we come out and you moved it up, I was wanting to demonstrate how that made that mare look a little flowier. What about the level of the head? Um, it might have been a touch low, you know, but again it wasn't it wasn't offensively low. You know, and, and uh, uh, I think that's just, to me, if it's not offensive, you know, it's not going to bother me too bad. You know, I, you're going to see Rainers get their head a lot lower than that mare when they show, you know. So, uh, now, if it had gotten lower than that, then you'd start to say, but we'll try and be conscious of that. You know, I was, I was kind of trying to make him suck that mare back and make her kind of popper hawk a little more and, and do you know just trying to show for demonstration purposes quite honestly anybody have anything else okay well guys thank you all very much for coming I appreciate it thank you